Good evening, everybody. They're all staring at me expectantly, Benjamin. Well, I'm glad Kyle preached on anxiety this morning because that helped a little bit. I might stop and ask him. He said that you can ask people for help, so I might stop and ask him here in the middle of this, so we'll see. Uh, I am grateful for the opportunity to be here to speak, and, and uh, don't get enough... I guess I, I, I do get plenty of opportunities to speak, and I'd rather, I just get nervous every time for some reason. It's always been that way, and it's just have something you have to overcome, I guess. But it's good for us to do this, I guess. I'm glad the elders decided to continue it. Um, and <clears throat> at the very, at the very uh, least, you'll appreciate the uh, young minister that we hired just recently. Uh, this is uh, titled Trying to Try, T-R-Y, Try. And... Uh, after listening about, oh, probably two weeks ago, Kyle said something that just stuck with me, Kyle. And it, 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 uh, it showed, in my opinion, uh, uh, humility and honesty that you very rarely see in a, in a minister. And it was something that you said. It was, uh, I sometimes feel like giving up a hundred times I felt that way, if you remember saying that. And I do too. And I don't know where, maybe you do as well. I feel like giving up. And I thought that that came from love because, uh, that, you know, knowledge, is er knowledge produces arrogance, but the love edifies. And that was edifying to me to, to hear that come from you. Uh, and uh, I, I will admit that I sometimes feel like giving up. As a matter of fact, this week I, I, I said something. Uh, I'm, Carrie listens to me. I have political uh, conversations. I have had political conversations with people on the Internet, you know, some of my liberal friends that I disagree with and uh, actually left, far left, and, but never changed their mind. So I kind of I quit that, Denny. I, you, told, you said you don't, it, it, and I just unfollowed them, and, but I'm still friends with them, you know what I mean? And it helps. And I said something this week, it just, uh, I, I said something to a relative that uh, I had no business saying. It turned, not, turned out to not be true. You know, like, uh, words are like arrows, you know? Just, you just... Uh, let the arrow fly, and once you let it go, you can't get it come back. You know, sometimes you get a uh, you get a heart shot or a double lung, or uh, you know, you might sometimes get a gut shot. You know, and then the, the internet makes it even even worse because what you do is you, you, you type. And Carrie always noticed when I when I'm typing loud, I'm really sincere about what I'm saying. You know, and then you hit that button, and I, I wasn't sure if I was gonna, yeah, hit the button, bam, it's like. Missiles just go in multiple directions, you know, just bam, 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 and just, uh, just. And I should have known, you know. Be, everyone be quick to hear, slow to speak, slow to anger, you know, because the the the, the anger of man does not uh, fulfill the righteousness of God. And and uh, I felt really bad. I apologized for it, but uh, I, I thought to myself, here I am, a mature Christian, and I'm saying saying that, and and uh, and I just felt like horrible. Felt horrible. I've been felt, felt horrible all week. I apologize, but still feel horrible. And uh, just felt like giving up, you know? Should, should have known better. But I read something the other day, and this is coming from our text tonight. It's Philippians chapter 3. If you would turn there, I'd appreciate it. Philippians chapter 3, verse 4 through 16. Philippians chapter 3, verse 4 through 16. And we'll look at that in a, in a minute, but... Paul had, a, had an attitude. And, and Wednesday night we talked about Paul and his background. He had, uh, he had been a persecutor of the church. In Acts 22, 3 through 6, he said, I'm a Jew, born of Tarsus of Cilicia, but brought up in a city, educated under Gamaliel, strictly according to the law of our fathers, being zealous for God, just as you all are today. I persecuted this way, the Christian way, to death binding and putting both men and women into prison, as also the high priest and all the council of the elders can testify. From them I also received letters to the brethren and started off for Damascus in order to bring even those who were there in Jerusalem as prisoners to be punished. But it happened that as I was on my way, and he talks about uh, Jesus saying, why, Paul, why, you, why do you persecute me? How is he started as being Apostle Paul after that? So he, he has this in his mind. He has this sense of, Failure, the sense of that, that, that he's persecuted the church, he has uh, done some things wrong, but he also talks about his background. He was very zealous, uh, according to the way that the fathers brought up in the, strictly under the law, and was uh, 
under the law, he was blameless. In fact, and if you look in Timothy, if you put your finger, keep your finger on Philippians there, look in, in Timothy, what we talked about Wednesday night, he said, uh, Paul said, I thank Christ Jesus as our Lord. This is 1 Timothy 1.12. Uh, he has strengthened me because he considered me faithful, putting me into service, even though I was formerly a blasphemer and a persecutor and a violent aggressor, and yet I was shown mercy because I acted in ignorance and unbelief. And if you go on down there in uh, verse 15, it was a trustworthy statement deserving all full acceptance that Christ Jesus came into the world to save sinners, among whom I am the foremost of all. So he had this in his mind, in the back of his mind, that he had done all these things, but it didn't stop him. And this is why I think it, it didn't stop him. He continued, continued on. And that's that Philippians chapter 3 uh, verse Philippians 3 talks about uh, him having confidence in the flesh. If anybody would have confidence in the flesh, Paul would have confidence of, uh, of the tribe of Benjamin, a Hebrew of Hebrews, according to the law, very zealous, talks about his, his background. But he also talks about in verse 7, but whatever things were gained to me, those things I have counted as lost for the sake of Christ. More than that, I count all things to be lost in view of the surpassing value of knowing Christ Jesus my Lord from whom I have suffered the loss of all things and count them but rubbish so that I may gain Christ and may be found in him not having a righteousness of my own derived from the law but that which is through faith in Christ the righteousness which comes from God on the basis of faith that I may know him and the power of the resurrection and the faithful uh, fellowship of his sufferings being conformed to his death in order that I may attain to the resurrection from the dead the ultimate goal not that I have already obtained it or have already become perfect, but I press on so that I may lay hold of that for which also I was laid hold of by Christ Jesus. Here's the kicker, verse 13. Brethren, I do not regard myself as having laid hold of it yet, but one thing I do, forgetting what lies behind and reaching forward to what lies ahead, I press on toward the goal for the prize of the upward call of God in Christ Jesus. Let us therefore... As many as, be, as are perfect have this attitude, and if any have a different attitude, God will reveal that to you. However, let us keep living by the same standard to which we have attained. The word perfect there, it means complete, lacking in nothing. It's the teleo, it's a Greek word, and it's used both th two times. But th the second time, it really means people that would be perfect through, in Christ, okay? So we're kind of, in a way, we're kind of... Uh, Allowed to be allowed to make mistakes as Christians, but we're trying to put everything behind us—the good that we've done, the trophies that we have in life, the good that we've done in the church. We have to consider to put that behind us, even as Paul did. The the, uh, the the good that he did, he puts that behind him. He did, doesn't allow himself to be pumped up, arrogant in his. Uh, thoughts to him of himself. We all have our trophies in life. I have a trophy at the house. I got a trophy wife over there. And sometime I'll have to um, give it up, you know. But I, I, I put these things in the, in, uh, aside. I put it behind me. I put it, uh, I regard it, uh, I, I don't regard as laying hold of, of the goal yet, but I march on toward the goal. Also the bad that we do, the bad that we've done, we have to have faith in, uh, in God and uh, our uh, belief that he will be merciful to our iniquities and remember them against us no more, as Hebrews 8, 12 says. Remember back in the day when Disney, Walt Disney's, uh, Disney uh, cartoons taught morals instead of uh, uh, politically correct uh, uh, inventions from the LGBTQ community. And they actually, didn't, even in, up into the 90s, they taught moral. If you look at today, the, the, very, the, the, the lessons that Disney teaches, this, this, is, this might be judgmental. It seems to be very shallow. A anyway, back in the 90s, they had a, they had a cartoon. It was, the, it was uh, Lion King. Remember Lion King? Akuna Matata. Remember Simba? Simba thought he killed Mufasa, thought he killed his dad. So he runs off. He, he, he lives in, in a carefree life in the jungle somewhere and just living on bugs that he finds underneath of logs. And, and uh, he, uh, he, he is found by Rafiki, who finds him a little bit later. And, uh, and Rafiki uh, didn't know that he was uh, alive, but he found him. And, and Rafiki, what's Rafiki do? Smacks him on the head. Swack. Hits Simba in the head. And, and Simba had been saying, 
he, he had a bad past, but he said, uh, Rafiki told, he told Rafiki, that hurt. And then Rafiki said, it doesn't matter. It's in the past. Remember that? It doesn't matter. It's in the past. He says, sometimes the past hurts, but we have to put it aside, learn from it, like Simba learned from it because Rafiki went to swing for him again, and Simba ducks that time, or be overcome by it. So that's kind of what we're talking about here, that, that the past sometimes can hurt. Uh, we can be guided by our past, learn from it, or we can be overcome by it and be overcome by uh, guilt. Jesus talked a little bit about this too um, when he talked about, uh, remember one time somebody said, Jesus, I'll follow you anywhere. And Jesus said, the, the, uh, the foxes have holes and the birds of the air have nests, but the Son of Man has nowhere to lay his head. And then he, then he said to a young uh, a person there, he said, follow me. And the, they said, well, let me first bury my father. And he said, uh, let the dead bury the dead. You know, the, very, we don't, and we don't know if this person actually followed Jesus or not. Very often people, Levi and the, the sons of Zebedee, they, they just up and left the nets and, let, and followed him right then. This person said, let me bury my father. I thought that was kind of, when I first read that, I thought, well, that's kind of, that's kind of harsh, you know, that the guy wants to bury his father. Then another one says, uh, I'll follow you, but first let me say goodbye to those who are at my home. And, and then Jesus said, no one after putting his hand to the plow and looking back is fit for the kingdom of God. So, have you ever plowed before? I come from Pennsylvania. There's big hundred hundred acres plowing up there is just nothing. I mean, it's just big big long fields. And sometimes you make mistakes when you plow. You know, you might not get the fur quite straight. But when you're plowing, you're looking ahead, aren't you? You're not looking back where you made the mistake. You're looking ahead, or you're looking right down here where you're where you're working. Okay, so you're kind of putting your nose to the grinding wheel. You're doing the, you're doing the work, and you're not thinking about uh, what you did wrong. You might flip over a rock. You know, you might get the furrow not straight, but you're looking down at the end at a distant object, or you're looking at something that's already been established, a line that's been established. So that's a, similarly what we need to consider: is we need to look look to Christ and look at what He's established for us, how we should be behaving, how we should be working, and get in there and plow. In fact, 1 Corinthians 9, 10, and 11 says the plowman ought to plow in hope and a thresher to thresh in hope, sharing the crops. So that gives us a little motivation. When we, have, when we plow, we're in there working that we should be doing it in hope of, uh, of receiving our reward. <clears throat> well, we're all in this together, as Kyle pointed out this morning. 1 Peter 5, 6-11 says, therefore, humble yourselves under the mighty hand of God, 1 Peter 5, 6 through 11, that he may exalt you at the proper time, casting all your anxiety on him because he cares for you. Be of sober spirit and be on the alert. Your adversary, the devil, prowls around, prowls around like a roaring lion seeking someone to devour. But resist him, for <coughs> firm in the faith, knowing that the same experience of suffering are being accomplished by your brethren who are in the world. After you have suffered for a little while, the God of all grace, who called you to his eternal glory in Christ, will himself perfect, confirm, strengthen, and establish you. To him be the dominion forever and ever. So God will, God will find a way for us to, to succeed. He will help us. And we have our brethren to rely on as well. As Kyle pointed out this morning, that we, we can have uh, ask questions, have help from our brethren. Guilt will kill us. Pride will kill us. And you know that, uh, as it said, uh, we are not ignorant of the schemes and devices of the devil. 1 Corinthians 2.11. What does the devil say? What's some of his lies that he says? You're no good. I see a lot of my friends, I, I, I'm still friends with uh, some of my students on Facebook. Some of them are very, uh, very, uh, almost suicidal. You know, we... We, uh, we can get that way, too. We can get really down in the dumps sometimes, you know, when, when we think about our background. When we look back, we shouldn't look back. When we come plow back around, we might be able to straighten that furrow back out again when we come plow back the other way, you know, but we're still looking forward. 
Devil says, you've worked hard enough. <coughs> I've done my time teaching. I taught, I taught class. I don't have to work anymore. Or the devil might say, you have plenty of time. You can talk to that person about the gospel a little later on. Devil, devil's, uh, devil's going to beat us if we give him a chance. Well, I've said this before. If you think you're beaten, you are. If you think you dare not, you don't. If you'd like to win but think that you can't, it's almost a sense you won't. Life's battles don't always go to the stronger or faster person, but sooner or late, the one who wins is the one who thinks they can. We've got to have a positive attitude, not look at the past, not consider our failings, not consider our um, successes, but only to the point of, that it makes us a better person. And in conclusion, my brethren, don't let Satan head out.